I've had a couple of really nice days here. I'm kind of sad about leaving. Now, I wonder which provincial park is next. Good morning, it's uh, 7.30 in the morning. Didn't get any raid last night, that's good. And it's a very calm day out there. Uh, already showing 22 degrees. It did not get cold last night at all. Now, guess it's time to get up and get some coffee! Ugh. All right! It's always difficult to get a really good idea of the size of the Mini Mate. Um, the... Okay, this air mattress is, I think it's 38 inches wide. Two people can sleep on that. I got a little bedside table there. Um, and uh, it's six foot four, I think, maybe six foot five, six foot six. Um, the whole bed area, a couple of windows, haven't got them opened all the way. <clears throat> now, this outer room has got. Uh, no windows in it, which is too bad. But we're going to try to fix that. Days usually start with some sort of ritual. For a lot of us, that's exactly what this is. Our first ritual of the day. Like many of us, I have a little bit of trouble with uh, keeping my weight down. So I like being able to make breakfast. You now traditionally you'll go to a restaurant and it's always going to be you know, two eggs, three slices of bacon, hash browns, and two slices of toast. I have found that I have gone to one egg, sometimes doctored up a little bit, in this case I'm putting in some two-year-old smoked cheddar and instead of having one slice of toast which is pretty normal for me I'm gonna have one bagel today and as far as bacon goes well I always slice my bacon in two in half so I'm only having one s actual slice of bacon now this morning, I'm adding some of those leftover uh, leftover peppers and onions uh, without the chicken and make myself, well, it's not going to be an omelet. We're going to make a old guy McBagel. Timing is everything. So I've got bacon already started in the seven inch pan. And now I'm just figuring out toasting the bagels. We're gonna warm up the outside of them first. But it's been almost a year and a half since I made toast this way. So let's see how it goes. One full slice of bacon cut in half is always enough to really grease the pan. Watching those bagels, having my coffee. 
And it's time to flip them over and let's let's get them toasted. That bacon. Yeah, it's almost crisp enough. I'm using the seven inch pan, so this will spread out thinner and cook quicker. I can then kind of fold it up when I go and put it on the bagel. On this toaster, you'd better manually turn your bread or your bagel by a half turn if you wanted to get it evenly toasted. I think this is ready to flip over. Well, that's not bad for uh for being rusty at doing this. There's a touch of ice still in the cooler and the darn butter is much harder than I really wish it was. Smoky bacon mayo. Of course it's smoky bacon mayo. Cheers, hope you're all having a good breakfast too. So, two cups of coffee, one egg, some veggies, one slice of bacon, and one bagel. Yep, might have cost me two bucks, might have, but the taste is priceless. Okay, even with that much cheese and the omelet, lots of bacon fat, it just wipes clean. I love my cast iron. After that tasty breakfast, it's time to get in gear. Heat up a little water, get out the kitchen sink again. This is gonna be warm. Well, it's actually going to be almost hot. Get those dishes washed. Figure I'll use what's left of my spring water to give everything a really good rinse. And then, of course, I'll dry everything before I put it away. Can't forget to give the kitchen sink a good rinse as well. But yeah, there's a reason why this is just for dishes. Okay, now everything is just the reverse, taking this whole thing down. Oh, every once in a while I get a little bit of self-service here. Strange to sing. Anyway, we're gonna start uh, packing her up. 
Rolling up sleeping bags and deflating the air mattress always takes a little bit of time. Getting the inside of the Minimate prepped to start putting stuff back in it. But then it's a matter of just tearing everything down. Now, I'm going to be honest. Uh, if I didn't have the awning, if I didn't have the adder room, you know, it would take minutes at the most. But with everything I've got, and with just a nice relaxed pace, it takes me about 20 minutes to totally pack up. So from the time I've got the bedding put away to the time I'm hooking up to the bike or the car, yeah, about 20 minutes. By having everything in totes, I can, well, it's just much easier to keep track of it going in and out of the trailer. The packing system is the same each time. One of the things I've been adding is that, uh, that side table for the kitchen stuff and this new rug. But everything else is pretty well the same as I was carrying 20 months ago. So it's, it's a pretty organized setup and strike and getting stuff on the trailer. I call it a strike because that's from my old theater days. I did a lot of touring and everything has to go in the truck the right way and according to the list. It's getting close to 11 when I finally leave the site. I took a slow morning and it's been hot and sticky so I think I'm going to go have a shower before I actually drive home. So I had a great shower and then ran into my friend from yesterday who was telling me all about the fish then and he kind of found the mini mate interesting. Everything I, I need, including my kitchen sink. Yes, sir. I see it. <laughs> I seen you sat up. When I seen you sat yeah. up, I said, "Gee, that was." I thought it was a big trailer made up or something that was made up, right? But when I passed by just in, I said, "I told the wife what I seen," and then I said, "I said." They're called a mini mate. Yeah. They're made in Pennsylvania. Uh, brand new. They're about uh, about thirty one hundred U.S. I picked this up used in, in New Brunswick. I was looking for four, four years before I found a used one. But uh, uh, then you've got, you know, the, I've got the adder room on it, so yes, it gives me right. a yeah, more I see space. That. Yeah, yeah. But boy, it makes a huge difference to be able to take cooler, have solar uh, lighting and stuff, and and be able to cook with with, a, with two burners. You got a place wherever you stop, really. Oh yeah, and right. if I want to, I just I can just haul, haul set it up in just bare minimum and, and crash overnight. Yes, you know. that's right. right. No, but. Uh, but did I've been enjoying it. Did it's you get any pictures of fish jump? Uh, I got a, I got a couple. Yep. Uh, now whether on the video, you know, you'll really be able to see them or yeah, not. I don't know. Because right. there was, I, I counted about six, uh, and one of them, cleared, none of them cleared the balls. No. But, uh, but uh, it was, it was kind of fun to see them, see them try. That's as scarce as I've seen the fish here the year now. Yeah. One of the year now, and then I was down here last night this morning and. Just as scarce as I've seen them this year, but it's right. getting that time now. Oh, yeah. Okay, just had a nice shower. Uh, it's about 20 after 11. And, uh, So I got out of bed, oh, it was after seven, and I really have taken a very slow morning. Uh, my, my objective is to be on the road two hours after getting up. And here's how I look at it. It's two hours to get breakfast and pack up. Even with the tent, it used to take me half an hour, 45 minutes to really get the bike packed up. And I'd usually try to have a, uh, a coffee in, uh, I'd make up a coffee, make a coffee. 
Okay, there's Wi-Fi at the comfort station. I didn't know that. Who am I kidding? It always took me at least an hour to get packed up. Now, if I stopped to make a coffee, it took even longer. If you stop at a restaurant to get breakfast, unless it's McDonald's and, and fast food, it's going to take about an hour. So, two hours from getting up to leaving the campsite and being fed makes good sense to me. I'm looking at all the trailers set up close to this bridge and also the kids swimming in the pool under the bridge. Smart kids, hot day. And now we're on that 13 kilometers of dirt. Got worse than driving in fog. If the dump trucks are hauling one way, they're sure as heck coming back the other. So I'm thinking, what did I do right and what did I do wrong over the last couple of days? At end of the road, turn left onto Highway 430. Every trip right now is to get me ready for being on the road for oh. 8 to 10 weeks or longer. There'll be a lot more of Newfoundland coming up, hopefully with hauling with the motorcycle. Anyway, thank you very much for coming along. I uh, do hope you're going to give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't, I hope you subscribed. Thank you. So the park rangers showed up just as I was picking up my camera. One of them remarked, it's the uh, old driving away video, isn't it? <laughs>